slacks tonight, but I got in town uh, just uh, about 6.30, and uh, I thought, I don't have time to go change. This is what I've had on since before 6 this morning. So Zach said somebody needed to shower. Maybe it's me. I don't know. I didn't think so. But, but anyway, I do apologize. Uh, Brother Pat came through this surgery real good. Uh, he, uh, as I was coming across Garfield, uh, my daughter, other daughter called and said that they had just put him in a room. I left. He was still in. Uh, but he was. I mean, I, he. I had him up to the bathroom, and not really to the bathroom, but I had uh, had him up on the side of the bed and things a couple of times while he was in the intensive care unit there. But he he came through the surgery room real, real good. Of course, we don't know whether or not that. Um, you know, his body will reject it. If you don't know, they had to put a shunt in his liver. And um, this is supposed to help him from with not to retain so much fluids on his abdomen. And uh, they took um, 6,600 cc's off of him today, I believe is what they said. So it was three and a, three and a half liters, I believe is what they took off of him today. So um, anyway, um, he came through the surgery room real good. They went in through the main artery in his neck, and so um, he's going to be sore for a little while, but, but he came through it real good. So just remember him in prayer. If you'll stand, we will open in prayer. Mighty Saviors, we come before you this night. Truly, we glorify you. We lift you up and magnify your holy name. So thank the Lord that we can look unto thee and know with assurance that you're here. Hallelujah. Our praises and our glory, Lord, according to your word, Lord. If you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto thee, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you let each and every one of us lay aside every weight that would hold us down, Lord, and to worship you in spirit and in truth, to glorify you the way that you would be glorified. We know, Almighty Savior, that you are a God that we can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And we just ask, Mighty Savior, that you anoint each and everything that is done to thy glory this night. Bless each and every song that is sung. Hallelujah. Bless the word, Lord Jesus, as it comes forth. We know, Almighty Savior, that you are the way maker, that you are the one, Lord, that is able, hallelujah, to deliver and to set free. Truly be the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Central's never busy.
Page 57. <laughs>
Page 339. She was good. Huh?
the kids get ready to get out of school. Praise God, hallelujah, I need a break. Um, remember, though, um, there's going to be a lot of kids out uh, home alone. And, um, you know, the suicide rates and that's going to go up higher and due to summer and different things. So just continue to remember them. And uh, remember our friend Leslie, uh, Brother Mark's friend, and my friend, and Casey's friend. Um, remember her jail ministry also. Um, also, um, I like for the church to remember um, my dad, especially. Um, this is a really, really a hard transition for him. Um, I, I think he knows it's, you know, this is the last thought before going on. So just remember all them requests. Amen. Brother Kim? Yes, pray for my mom and my dad. And uh, pray for uh, Matt Kramer's family. Sister Erling, please remember Bill and all of her children, our grandchildren, and, and my cousin that had her hip replacement. That part's been real good. She, they sent her home, but her blood's still been that very so. So just pray for her on that. And, um, her mom also had had two hip or two knee replacements and everything. So just remember all of our things <coughs> far and now. Amen, Sister Susie. I guess the church remember my son Sherman. He's uh, his retina has separated, and he is actually one in his one eye right now. He's a surgeon mm -hmm. Tuesday, and his other eye he's got cataracts. The boy literally cannot see. Having a really hard time. He's awfully young. My guy is young for a cataract. Yeah, that's yeah. what they said. They said they well, but the, that age. the retina separated. My daughter Marie has had that done twice, and um, I know the first time it was in October, and we I had to meet a, a doctor clear up at uh, Community East. Um, that's where the eye doctor's office was, and then then they sent her to. Um, I was trying to think where we went to an eye doctor somewhere else and then they did the laser treatment on it and so she's had that done I think two different times that causes some of the stuff. The retina actually is separated from you know a piece of it is broke off. So anyway it's it's strange the way that it does that but we will remember that. Sister Caroline Brother Chuck. Remember Bill Watkins. You know, I led it to the Lord a couple of weeks ago. I prayed that somebody could get in there and could see him on a daily basis and talk to him. Amen. Brother Mark come and sit with us today. Uh, <coughs> please remember our daughter Patty. She came all the way in from Tennessee to be with us today. Um, and uh, remember, she, I'm not, she doesn't know if she's going to start back home tomorrow or Saturday, but she said she knows she'll at least go home by Saturday. So yeah, we had all the girls with us except for Tammy today. Uh, so I uh, think we had six of us in that little bitty cubby hole with St. Francis, and everybody was just, well, our gang is wild anyway, the girls are uh, laughing and joking, and, and that Brother Mark said, well, it does do the, it does do us good like a medicine, and have Brother Pat laughing and uh, everything before we went into surgery today, and of course we had good prayer with him, but yeah, I, just remember her and lift her up before the Lord. Just Monica. he's got in his ear. They said that his um, eardrum on his right ear has sank in and went in instead of out. And uh, it's pushing against the main bone in his skull right there and it's deteriorating the bone. So um, 
he's been having some trouble for a while, but no insurance, you know how that all goes. Um, so please remember that, that the Lord can heal that. <coughs> and um, I would like for the church to remember the, the three children on my bus. Actually, there is four, but three of them rides my bus. They are in foster care. They had their um, meeting with their mom yesterday. And um, the way they're talking right now, the little kids are telling me that the mom, if they can get <coughs> another place to rent, if they can get them in, I don't know the situation, living situation, but they said if they can, if she can find a home and they can get their own place, they will give them a 90-day trial to get them back as a family again. Um, and I told them that I will definitely pray about it and I'd have the church to pray about it. These are three little, ch um, actually there's four of them. They're in foster care and uh, they're just a little blessings. But um, they're young. The oldest is 10 and the youngest is 5. So um, just pray that God will have his will in that situation um, for them children. Amen. Brother Sometimes it seems like that whenever God starts working, then the, the enemy, he starts working. Yeah. Um, I give the testimony Tuesday night about how that, um, about the turtle. So <laughs> I won't go into all about, about the turtle, but uh, Brother uh, Sean had been praying all day after he heard Brother Tony's message, and his prayer had been, not my will, but thy will be done, Lord Jesus. And <clears throat> Whatever you want, Lord, your will be done. And yesterday, as he came home, he blew the motor in his car. I said, I said that the Lord starts working, and buddy, the enemy start. And, you know, they just bought a house and trying to get things set up a bit, and uh, blew the <laughs> engine in the car. And so, um, of course, they took out, did take out. Uh, the best warranty that you could buy when they bought it, but of course you still got to deal with all of uh, that, and you don't have a, you know. I told him to check. I'm pretty sure that they would give him a rental car that it and that should with the the get you know the warranty that he has, but but I don't know. He didn't didn't check today. I don't know. But anyway, so I said just bless them and remember them in prayer. Uh, Draven had a concert at school tonight. That's one of the reasons that place is not here. But uh, remember that. Unspoken request by the uplift of hands, a standing go before the Lord in prayer. Mighty saviors, we come before you this, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you have your way, Lord, with each and every one of these requests that's come up before thee. Mighty Savior, not our will, but your will be done in each and every one of them, Lord. We know that you are a healer, Lord. By your stripes we are healed, that you took our afflictions and our infirmities upon yourself, mighty Jesus, that we might be able to walk in victory. Those that need jobs, Lord, we know you exactly where the job is, Lord. And we know, mighty Savior, that you are a way maker where there seemeth to be no way, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, that you are our comforter, the ones who lost loved ones recently, Lord. We know that you are God that is absolutely able to move in any situation, Lord. Truly we know, Lord Jesus, that you are a God that is able to move and have your way, Lord, in each and every one of these situations has been called out, Lord. Hallelujah, remember each and every one in our churches tonight, Lord. Truly we know, Lord, you say with that you are a God that is absolutely able to move on all of these requests, Lord. Those that maybe that were not spoken this night, Lord, but those that were silent, you know we have looked down at our hearts and you can see, Lord, the requests that we have in our hearts. All of us have loved ones that are out of the ark of safety, mighty Savior, we ask that you draw, Lord, by your spirit, and truly know, mighty Savior, that you are God that cannot lie, hallelujah, that according to your word, mighty Jesus, as we bring them forth before you, Lord, just have your way. Mighty Jesus, we just give you the praise, the glory, the honor, so thank the Lord that we can look unto Jesus <coughs> as they all been the finish of our day, but truly we give you the praise in Jesus' precious name we ask it. 
Let the church say amen. 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 Sister Daisy, yes. I need to stand up for my daughter Patty.
don't know Brother Zach, this is Brother Zach for visitors here. Brother Zach's been coming, you guys have been coming here for a couple years. Year and a half, I think. Yeah. Think about a year and a half, isn't it? You is. Two years. He says two years. Two years, huh? I'm sure you are. Yeah. So, and Brother Zach has become our bud. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he likes to get up in front of everybody, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You like the attention? I love it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we like giving it to him, don't yes. we? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Brother Zach likes to do messages too, besides singing. He loves to sing. He gets all excited when he sings. And so we've been discussing back and forth because he has elected me his spokesperson, his mouthpiece. <laughs> because I have a big mouth. Right? Moses and Aaron, right? <coughs> Yeah, and Aaron was Moses' mouthpiece, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what he said I was. I was his Aaron. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been working back and forth, yeah. and we won't take very long, will we? We'll let Sister Casey yeah. get up here. Um, I give him and Misty a whole bunch of scriptures, areas of the Bible, to study. And you picked out who? Elijah. Elijah. So we are going to be reading in 1 Kings chapter 17, but we will not be reading in the King James Version. So to give you a little bit of a background, we have the Life Application Study Bible that Zach got for Christmas. And we've been using that in Sunday school as well, haven't we? And it really gives a lot of more detail. It puts it in more layman's terms, more everyday terms. And it's been a real help to us in Sunday school and for Zach, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Can understand it a little bit better. And yeah. it's it really is pretty close to the King James because we typically will read out of the King James and read out of his Bible as well to get a little more clarification. And what did I promise you I would do? Yeah. Yeah. I promised him I would use his Bible, not mine. So... We're going to use his Bible tonight. So let me read it. It says, Elijah fed by ravens. Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him, and camped beside Kareth Brook, east of Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. And that's what Brother Zach here picked <coughs> out to speak yeah. on. We had several different ones. And he, something caught him about this one. Why did you like this one? It was because he, he had to leave the brook? Yeah. Yeah? What brook was he by? You remember? Water. He was by water. Kareth? Yeah. Yeah? And which, which river did he go into? Jordan. Jordan. Jordan River. And who found <coughs> Elijah? Yeah. The birds, the ravens. And he drank water from river. the river. And then what <coughs> happened to the river? It dried up. It dried up because there was no rain. Because Elijah went through and he had told the king <coughs> that there is not going to be any rain until I set. And he had went and hid himself away from the king at that point based upon what God told him. God instructed him, you go over here now and hide yourself away while this drought comes into the land. And so that's what Elijah did. And God provided for him. Didn't he? He provided. 
He took care of Elijah while he was by the brook. Yeah. He made sure that the ravens came morning and night and brought him meat. <coughs> and we discussed that at one point. This was fresh meat. You know, he, they were, he was getting fresh meat brought to him morning and night. Yeah. And then he had clean water right there because God sent him by a brook that was still being supplied. <coughs> During the time God wanted him at the brook, yeah. he made sure it was supplied, didn't he? And then the brook dried up. Right? Yeah. And that meant Elijah had to move. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's what God does to us. <clears throat> God takes and dries up our brook. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. And this might, this isn't physically. This may yeah. not be in the natural world, right? Yeah. Yeah. He takes and he dries up our brook spiritually. Yeah. So he <clears throat> takes and he takes something away from us we've been very comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. Has he done that to you? Yeah. Yeah. Get you out of your comfort zone. He dries up that brook and he forces you to move on. Move on. He's forced you to move on, yes. hasn't he? Yeah? You get out, you talk to people more, don't you? Yeah. Yeah? You get up in front of people and sing. You didn't do yeah. a lot of that before, did you? No. Not as much as you do here? Yeah. Yeah? Did you talk to people near as much? No. No. Why was that? Good. I didn't know people. You didn't know people. And he was afraid people didn't understand you too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was a hard, it was difficult to communicate, wasn't it? But you know what? God moved him out of his comfort zone. He moved Hallelujah. him out of his family. Away from his family. Distanced himself from his family. And now he's got a bigger family. And God is using him. Isn't he? Yeah, and he enjoys it, don't you? Now we can just get a little bit of rebellion out of him so he can get the church. <laughs> See, I knew I sneak that one in on you. <laughs> Turn his face red. He is so hot. He's sweating, poor thing. <laughs> but God uses him. And God uses him because, you know what? He stepped out of his comfort zone. <coughs> he knew what he had with his family. He could communicate with his family. Everything was hunky-dory with his family. <coughs> so you know what? We all kind of stepped in. And we said, you know what, Zach? We're going to be your friend, whether you want to or not. Yeah, amen. And he learned that he could stay with us. And he could be <coughs> with us. And he could be comfortable. And he could be used more than what he was being used before. And he can communicate more. And he can get up here and teach with me. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Now we can get him into Sunday school every morning so I can teach him first. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rebellion. That's the rebellion we're working on. Yeah. yeah. We're working on that. It's <laughs> not that. <laughs> so, Zach had, to, to kind of wrap this up, Zach had a prayer. From yeah. Psalms, right? That he yeah. wanted, wanted us to say. <coughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, enter his In the end. gates with gates with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Go into Go into his courts. He got with praise. His, his <coughs> praise. Give thanks. They give it to him. New you and go praise praise his name. Name. Yes. Amen. loving and merciful and, and gracious and kind God and I just thank him for being with me no matter what I'm going through no matter how I feel uh, he's always there for me and I just love him and I thank him and I thank him that from a child he taught me to love him as a child I did not see
is assisting me. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Casey, and um, I do jail ministry at Morton County Jail. Uh, the Lord has put it in my heart to actually preach in prison. The problem is I don't know how to preach. So <laughs> I get to practice on you all. You have to bear with me. This is only the like second time I've spoke like this. I thought about texting and having everybody wear orange because that probably make me feel more comfortable. <laughs> but then my husband said, well, just picture everybody as me because he says I preach just fine. But um, it is an honor to be here. And I, the Lord has laid something on my heart. And it's a tough, tough to follow Zach. He does such a good job and has the people's hearts. And that's wonderful because when you have the people's hearts, you know, that people listen. If you want to turn with me to Matthew 5, verses 22 through 24. And I do have a lot of references. I won't have to turn to all of them. I figure the less I say and the more the Lord says, the better it will be. So let me know when you're ready. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Matthew 5, verses 23 to 24. 324, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come again, come and offer thy gift. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would anoint me, that I would be able to just speak something from your word, that, that my words would be your words, and that you would just use me and help me to set aside my flesh for just a moment. I pray that you would just anoint the hearers of, and the ears of those who hear. I just pray that you would just be with us in this time together, Lord. You know how much I, I need your help. And I, my heart has been so burdened that, that I, this has been so near and dear to me and that it's been something I've been working on so much so myself. I just thank you and praise you for all that you've done in my life. And I just bind every unclean spirit that would come against us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the message this evening is, I'm offended. So what? So the first thing I did was look up what is a, a, to be offended. What does the word offend mean? And it means to cause anger, resentment, or wounded feelings in. And I, you know, it's, it has been heavy on my heart because it seems like we are so easily offended. And I don't want to be a person that's easily offended. It seems like even within the body of Christ, we are offended. We are offended over everything. We are offended that the pastor didn't shake her hand. We're offended at the lady at work who who doesn't do her job properly. We're offended at the lady who seems to take her sweet time at the grocery store. We're offended at the person who has 25 aisles in the 10 item aisle line. It's just, it seems like there is so much that we are offended over. And the first thing that I thought about was, well, what is the difference between offended and hurt? Because if I were to say, well, you're offended over it, some people would say, well, I'm hurt. So what, I started thinking, okay, what is the difference? And really, the difference boils down to love, because when I have love for someone, I'm, you know, and they do something against me, it's usually hurt. How do I know it's hurt? Because if someone, let's say one of my children hurts my feelings, I will have a tendency to hide it or downplay it. I don't go and, and talk about it or, well, they said it because, you know, I might make excuses for them. And, even though they've done something against me, I want to do what I can to help. Well, if they did it because of this, I want to help them through that. When it comes to offense, we want to tell everybody. We want everybody to take our side about it. Um, and, and, and sometimes I hope they get what's coming. I might not want to participate, but I will tell myself, okay, the Lord will deal with it. The Lord, the Lord will, will take care of this for me. Um, it made me think of Hebrews uh, twelve fifteen, where it says, you know, uh, talks about looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. And I thought, you know, if, if bitterness is a root, then offense, being offended is the seed. And seeds don't grow unless we, we water them and, and, and take care. And, and I, I just don't want to be one of those people that feeds into to being offended. Um, 
I know that it, it's been something that I have been dealing with so much so at work because I do feel like sometimes I do more than the others. And I think to myself, okay, why does it bother me? It's not even something that directly, you know, affects me. Sometimes there are, it is things that directly affects us. But then we find, I find myself, you know, looking at what other people are doing and thinking, okay, that has no bearing on me at all. Um, I work with some people who I feel like I do twice as much as they do. And, and as soon as I started thinking about that, the Lord brought the scripture to mind in, in Matthew 20, 1 through 15, where he goes and he's hiring the day laborers. And he goes and, and he's telling the parable and he goes and he offers a wage for a day's work. And they accept. Then then the um, then this comes again in, in noonday and offers the wage again and it's accepted. And then, you know, those who came in the beginning say, okay, we worked longer and got paid the same. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, why does it matter? You know, what you do is, is up to you. What, how you handle it, you're accountable to me. And no one else is accountable to you or held to your standard. And that convicted my heart. It really did. I started thinking about what offense... Uh, being offended does to us. Uh, it certainly hurts our witness. Uh, Proverbs 18, 19 says a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And for the last couple weeks, that has been on a post-it note in my book at work, my book that my, I take orders because I was ha I was having so much struggle. It seems like when the Lord starts to deal with you on something, the enemy will come against you with that exact same thing. So it seemed like the more I was dealing with it, the more I was saying, okay, I'm not going to get offended over little things. I'm not, this is not going to have a hold on me. I'm not going to let this root in me. It was like, it was everywhere I turned after that. So I actually wrote this particular scripture down and put it in my book because I just, I want to be a younger person that has dealt with this. I, I have met so many wonderful older Christians that it seems like they've got a hold on this. And and that they're not, you know, as easily offended as my generation. And I think that part of the reason my generation is, a, is so easily offended is because we're a generation of rights. Don't you know I have rights? I have a right to free speech. I have a right to this. I have a right to that. And it so ties in. I mean, if I have so many rights, then if I feel like my rights are infringed on, I get offended when, um, if you have the, the gratitude and just the thankfulness it, it really does make a difference uh, in how, how you see things, just to be grateful for what you have instead of being worried about what other people have or what they're doing. Um, and it seems like one offense will lead to another. It's, it, you know, I, I think of, I started thinking of like a chain of offenses. So sister so-and-so gets upset, that brother so-and-so didn't shake her hand, and then she wants to go talk about it to another sister so-and-so. Who gets up, you know, who then gets upset about it, and it can't, it can't, it's one of those things that can, one offense begets another offense begets another, and, and I just don't want any part in that at all, and the Lord has really been helping me. It, the Bible talks about it hindering us from receiving from the Lord. Um, the parable of the wicked servant in Matthew 18, 21 through 35, where the servant came and he asked the king, um, he was called in on a debt, a debt he could not repay, a debt that was far more than he could repay, and he begged the king for forgiveness of this debt. And the king was willing to forgive him of the debt, but then when the, the, the servant came and, and asked him to forgive him of a $20 debt, pretty much, and he was, you know, you, know, you owe me, we're, we're going to take care of this anyway, I just... I don't want my, my receiving from the Lord to be hindered, especially because it seems like in my own life, in my own experience, something can be really big, and I, I forgive that. But if you do something little to me, something, something petty, and I just I want to be forgiven because the Lord has forgiven me of so much. So um, Matthew <coughs> six fourteen says, uh, "For if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses." So the Bible clearly tells us that pretty much if we are not loving to other people and forgive them, that it hinders us. And and more than anything, I don't I don't want to be hindered. I, I want to be uh, I want to receive from the Lord. I want to see I want to see all the things that I hear the old timers talk about. And I know I know for me that 
how easily offended or not offended I am is gonna is is has a has a bearing on that. Really, it does. Um, reading the Word, walking in love, praying, fasting, seeking after the Lord. It all it all ties in. Amen. Um, and the, and the scripture that I read in the open in the in the beginning talks about leaving your gift at the altar. So that again tells me that it, it hinders us from receiving from the Lord when we when we hold unforgiveness. Being offended wounds our souls. And this was something that I really didn't understand. <laughs>
I do know that when I hold unforgiveness, it's a sin. And I do not want to allow the enemy any license and, and license to strike at my body. Um, so what do I do when I'm offended? Or when, when the enemy is trying to come against me with offense? The first thing I do is pray for them, which is hard sometimes to genuinely pray for someone that's hurt you or come against you. Um, but I try my best to do know. The main thing I do is to quit talking about it. Um, in Matthew, let's see what we've got here. In Matthew 15:10, Jesus tells us that it's not what goes into a man's mouth, but what comes out of a man's mouth that's out there. Um, and also in Matthew 18:15, uh, Jesus is given instruction on what to do with someone. Uh, I think. Let's see, we'll look at it. We'll read it. That I'm saying, I think. 18.15. Yep. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. It doesn't tell six. It doesn't tell you to tell six people. Then decide what to do. Then be even more upset about it. And then go confront the person. <laughs> yep. That's all right. It says to go to him alone and tell him his fault. Um, besides not talking about it, uh, I wrote be kind anyway. And sometimes that's hard as well. Proverbs 25, uh, 21 through 22 talks about if, you, if your enemy is hungry and thirsty, feed them and give them a drink. Um, and that is mentioned again in Romans 12 and 19 through 21. And then the last thing I put is quit thinking about it, which is hard. This is something that we talk about at the jail a lot, taking our thoughts captive. And it takes practice. I tell my girls all the time it takes practice. It's, it's something that is a, a lifelong quest to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. The, the darts are not physical darts. I, I don't walk outside the church and I'm literally struck by a fiery dart. They are fiery darts against our mind. Uh, and it says to lift that shield of faith. And 2 Corinthians 10, 10, 5 says to take every thought captive. Amen. Um, and then Philippians 4, 8 tells us what to think on. So, I just want to do better. Um, it's something that, like I said, the Lord really has been working on me with. Uh, by no means is it something that I've mastered, but it's heavy on my heart. I want to do better. People watch how we act. People watch how we treat each other. Um, working in the food service industry or if you're in any kind of, of service or, or working around people, it would really surprise you how people treat each other, especially people... Um, that you know, or, or, you know, people that are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and I just want to be more conscious. So I want to be more conscious of how I'm, I'm reacting to people, how I'm handling different situations. I love the Lord, and, and He has done so much for me, and I just, I want to, I want His light to shine through me, and I don't want that to be hindered by, by the way I react or, or the way, way I treat people. And um, this week, I, I've purposed in my heart to, uh, pretty much apologize to someone that I have taken offense. And the Lord made me do it before. And it seems like when I feel, feel like I got it all sorted out, <laughs> there's someone else. I'm like, oh, I should have said that. Yeah, better go apologize. But it's good for me. It's good for me. It, it keeps us humble. Uh, and it keeps our conscience clear. And, you know, the last thing I want is to, to for, for everybody to be getting in real good. Holy Spirit be moving. And then he put my fa his finger on me and said, you didn't apologize to that person. You know, I don't want to be hindered by those kinds of things. I want my conscience to be clear before the Lord. I just thank him for all that he's done for me and, and the way that he's, you know, moved and worked in my life. And I just give him the honor and the glory. Each and every one of us need to examine our heart. Amen. To see... Hallelujah, if we have offended, amen, or if we have bitterness in there. Because you know, it don't really take but just a little bit, and it just grows and grows and grows and grows if you don't get rid of it. That's why it's so important each and every day to repent 
and ask God to show you if there's something in your heart that he needs to take that you need to take care of you know and um, but uh, that's very very good very good word hallelujah because each and every one of us hallelujah have to watch because it's so easy we were talking the other day when you're driving so many times you'll uh, I was talking about how that somebody cuts you off and you say you know you're you're stupid or uh, uh, you need to get you know you need to learn how to drive or whatever you know and we should be saying bless them Lord you know and that's, uh, I they know not what they do yes amen Now, Brother Pat is very, very um, uh, patient and kind, and uh, he just exuberates love. He really does. And, and he's the same person that you see all the time. I mean, no matter what situation he's going through, he really is the same person all the time in our home as well as he is out of the home. But uh, sometimes he gets a little impatient, you know. I'll say, now, patience, possess thee thy soul. And he goes, I know, I know. But, in, you know, of course, I know I'll be sounding board. Yeah. It's what he tells me so many times. He'll say, you're my sounding board, you know. And uh, our daughter was talking today, and, and I said, you know, if, if this job paid, if this job paid anything, I'd give it up. <laughs> And I, people don't know when they, you know, a lot of times people say, boy, I'd love to be the pastor of a church. You do not know what you are saying. You really don't. Sister Patty Joe and I were talking about the, that today um, because our son-in-law pastors in Manchester, Tennessee, and our, and our grandson uh, is his assistant pastor. And uh, But you don't realize the things so many times that the pastor goes through. And that's really true. And they carry the burdens of everybody, seems like, you know, uh, when they're going through trials and stuff. <clears throat> but God is good, and you have to be called, really, truly called to be a pastor. Yes. It, is a, it is a calling. It's not something that you call yourself into, that's for sure. But, uh, and I am no pastor. I have never had it. Desire, you really don't want to hear my thoughts on women pastors. So. And would you like to be a pastor? All right. I believe that uh, God can cause a woman to start a church, but I don't believe God ever sent a woman over to continue as a pastor of a church. So I, I, that's my personal belief. That's my personal belief. My mother was a pastor, but I still, <laughs> that was my own personal belief. But I do believe God can cause, uh, well, well it, we know there's neither male nor female in, in Christ Jesus. And I know he called them to be teachers, he called them to be evangelists, amen. And I believe he called them to be a helpmate, amen. So anyway, God is good. He's on the throne, hallelujah. And uh, I'm just believing, I do not believe that Brother Pat's work is finished as yet. And I believe that this here uh, surgery that he just went through today is going to be a great help. And uh, we're looking forward to getting on the rock and doing the work for God. Amen. I'm glad to see everybody here tonight. Our, our evening services have started uh, dropping off a little bit, um, but uh, and our so I said it's amazing for 26 years our Sunday our uh, Sunday morning service was not was never really big. I mean, if we had 50, we really thought we were we were thought we were doing good on Sunday morning. If we had 50, and our evening services, I've seen times that we had people standing outside because we didn't have room to seat everybody. And so our evening services used to be always really full. Well, you know, it's just the opposite anymore. We're running anywhere around 70, as, you know, for our Sunday school and sometimes our evening services. We're not having very many, but, but 
Things change, you know? This is it. God never changes, but people change. Hallelujah. So it's always a changing thing all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? All, Brother Kevin? Yeah, I am. I want to just kind of tell myself. Uh, last uh, last night, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I felt so guilty after after it was all over that there's, you know, <coughs> but I had uh, I had taken the old maid down to Mulberry <coughs> Park because uh, Trinity was having uh, like uh, uh, Bible study Bible study for kids, you know. But the storm was coming in, you know, and and uh, but anyway, they was they was two boys come walking down, the, come you know, come jumping down the street, and, uh, and one just a screaming, sit, 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 right in front of the, you know, and uh, so he got, I sat in the van and he got kind of behind me there, and I said, hey. I said, you, what's that mean? What, 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 what's 666 mean? He said, oh, that's the devil. He said, I love you. <clears throat> and he made a finger gesture. Oh. 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 He said he hated God. <clears throat> but the worst part about that is, is the way I uh, and the situation. And uh, when I could have uh, maybe spoke to the boys, you know. And, uh, but I didn't call them back. I run my mouth. And uh, those are things that uh, just Sister Casey uh, was just speaking of. And I know where she works, and I know how frustrating it can be. Uh, but sometimes it's hard. It's hard to hold your tongue. But, uh, uh, and as you know, there's been a lot of here lately. A lot of times, and there's still some more. But there's a lot of times I've been getting up, and I've just you know, certain people come in. And I've just got to clear. I've got to clear things up. I did. With, I did with uh, Brother Mike. Uh, Bulldog and, uh, and uh, somebody else. I, Brother Chris. Brother Chris. And, uh, but it's the kind of things that, that really, I mean, they, 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 when you do those things, it, instead of just taking a little step towards in your walk, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll leap you forward, you know? And uh, so I'm, uh, uh, I didn't handle that situation down there at that park very well. But you're going to do better. But, but I'm going to do better the next time. <laughs> so, uh, Amen. Amen. Well, we all, like I said, we all, we all fail in some sort of the glory of God. And, and when we get, you know, after we've done it, we can look and say, wow, I should have handled that a whole lot different, you know. But so many times, we hand, do handle it wrong. And then we are planting a seed. And like she said, you know, if that seed don't get in this, it's in the scripture. And God used parables that people could understand. And you can understand about the seed, where the seed fell on stony ground, you know, where the birds come and uh, pick, got the seed, and different things. And, and when it was planted on good ground, how the <coughs> ground that had been plowed up, then it, it took hold. And whenever it it's not when it's on the rocky ground or whatever bad ground, it's not going to take hold. So when it's planted on that good ground, though, it has to be watered and has to be uh, to cure up, the we or the weeds will even choke it out. So anyway, we just have to we have to watch. And I said if, if we could if we could conquer this right here, if we could conquer that, how wonderful it would be. It said it's a little member, <laughs> but my, 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 the destruction that little mouth can do, you know. But God is good, and God is still on the throne, and, and He loves every one of us. He loves those boys. He loves those boys, no matter what. God loves His creation. 
He truly does. They didn't know what they were doing, did they? They did not know what they were doing. God loves His creation. And God loves the sinner man, no matter who He is. No matter who He is. Whether it's the harlot out on the street, whether it's the alcoholic, whether it's a drug addict. Uh, we were sitting talking today. Um, we really, us girls, really had a good time talking, you know, uh, about different things today. And we were talking about how that the dr Martinsville has become so infested with drugs. It is just, and you know, and it's hard to believe. You know, I, as a kid growing up, I heard about drugs out in, New, uh, in California or in New York. You never heard about anybody on drugs here in Martinsville, Indiana. I didn't know anybody that was on drugs, whether it was a prescription drug, a heroin, or whatever it was. I didn't know anybody as a kid growing up that did drugs. But today, it is everywhere. Uh, and we have a little, uh, we have a grandson that weighs in jail right now. Um, and he was raised in church. But heroin, and it, you know, it's, it's a shame his little kids, five and six and seven years old they are, and say, you know, daddy's worthless. Daddy shoots up. Daddy sold my Christmas and sold it. Yeah. You know, I mean, isn't that horrible? But see, the elements of this world, the devil is out to seek and destroy if he possibly can. And I, believe, I, I truly believe that he's going to be saved. I really believe that with all my heart because he belongs to me. Brother David, I, stand up and give your testimony, Brother David. I want you to do that, I mean. Yeah, I'm 35 years old. Well, 34, I'll be 35 in the next month. But I come from a 27 year addiction of methamphetamine. And I'm 11 and a half months sober, thanks to Jesus. Yeah. She's been she's been sober for four years now. She was talking about been sober for four years. Hallelujah. I've seen a time when she had been on drugs, couldn't even get herself to the bathroom. We had to take her to the bathroom. I seen her go turkey or try. But praise God. She hit bottom. And sometimes that's what we have to do is hit bottom before we can come up out of it. God is willing to deliver and to set free. Any and he can and he will, but you've got to be willing to do it. You've got to be willing to let God take control and to set you free. Amen. I'm proud of you, Brother David, because I've seen I've seen Taking you to the hospital when you're in a terrible condition. Terrible condition. But God is good. Hallelujah. Sister Misty's gave her testimony so many times about how God set her free. Hallelujah. God, God is able. Sister Lori. Sister Lori, God set her free. Amen. God is a deliverer. He's not a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of person. Hallelujah. He loves his creation. He's a great and mighty God. If you'll stand here, be dismissed. I hope, I hope you got something out of this. Be a light shining forth in this world of darkness. You know, uh, God, like I said, God loves his creation. 
And he wants you to be a light shining forth in a world of darkness. You, you, sometimes you're the only person, the only Bible that the sinner is going to see. What kind of Bible are they reading? Amen. Brother Tony? Today they, they took me off of oxygen. I'm totally healed from oxygen. Yeah.